Verity, the fourth encounter in the Salvation's Edge raid, is one of the most complicated encounters in Destiny 2 raid history. Even veteran raiding groups are struggling to find workable strategies in this encounter. If you have been stuck trying to clear this, I'm going to go over the very basics each roll needs to finish this encounter. Many guides go into deep details on the theory on how the encounter works, but in this guide, I will give you just the basics you need to not feel like you're letting your team down and can help finish this encounter. I also split the roles into chapters in this guide, so depending on where you end up, check on those specific areas in the video. One final note is, it will really be important for every garden to have very different looking armor and ghost shells from each other as this becomes important in this encounter. And again, with this encounter, since everyone has to play a role, it is really important to understand the basics of this encounter to complete it. To start this encounter, you walk up to one of the three guardian statues and interact with it. I'm going to explain this encounter end to end from one specific role, the inside solo room, as that is the role that requires the most precision on what you are doing for yourself. Then I'll explain the outside room that has three guardians, which has some additional steps. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is because in that room, since there's three guardians, you can play different roles. Skip ahead if you want to learn the differences with the outside room. If you're finding yourself in a room by yourself, then you're in the inside room, which three guardians randomly teleport to separate rooms with the exact same setup. There'll be three guardian statues of shapes above them. For the outside room to do their work in the encounter, you will need to tell them in order from left to right, the first two guardian symbols are above their heads. So in other words, if there's a square on the left guardian and a triangle on the a middle guardian, you'll need to tell them that. Also in this room, make sure to spec off for ad control as there are, no, there are no bosses and you will be able to handle ants on your own while moving symbols around. It's also important to have things that can burn down large ogres and later on in the encounter will be unstoppable so you need to be able to deal with those. The goal now is to locate your guardian. You will know as your guardian because of your unique armor that you have on. Above your guardian, you'll see what a symbol is. Let's say in this case that shape is a circle. You will then want to look on the back wall and see rotating shapes in the back. In this case, there's a circle and triangle. Your goal now is to get the triangle out of your room and to the guardians with the triangle. To do that, you need to kill a knight that drops a triangle and then take that triangle and interact with the guardian statue with a triangle above their head. Once this is complete, you're gonna tell the other guardians that your, your shapes match. At this point, every solo garden should have two copies of their own sh shape in their room and the Bach wall should show that. In this case, I see rotating circles twice. One important note, if you get into the room at the beginning and you see those, you see two rotating shapes, whether it's circle, triangle, or square, and they're the same symbols, you've completed the first step. Sometimes that just happens by accident and you don't need to do anything further. Once this is complete, your next goal is to send your shape, in this case circle, to the other guardians. This allows all solo guardians to have the shapes they need to make the key they need to get out of the room. When we are ready for that step, my fire team would say we are ready to distribute so everyone does at the same time. Some people will actually space this out. They'll have one person do it, then the next person, the next person. I think it's fine to do it all at the same time. Again, in my case, my goal is to get a copy of Circle to the other two guardians. Once each solo guardian has done this, you will then have the two symbols in the room that you need to complete your key. And they should be the opposite of the symbol. So in this case, since I had Circle, I'm gonna need Square and Triangle. So at that point, you just kill the Knights, get those two symbols, at that point you have the key and if the outside room team has done their job, you'll be able to exit through the glass in the back of the encounter. A couple of things. When you kill both your knights, an ogre will show up. You have to kill that ogre to get more knights. Also, in the middle of this, you'll become frozen, which will look like you died. I will discuss that mechanic in the next part of the video. To summarize, your goal is to get the symbol that isn't yours out of your room and get that to the guardian who has that on their statue. Next, you're going to take your specific symbol and you're going to give that to the other two guardians by picking up from a knight and putting it in the statue of the other guardians. Once this is complete, you're then going to kill knights and pick up the two symbols that don't match what's on your statue and you use that to get the key to get out of the room. Next, for the ghost encounter, You'll have noticed in the middle of doing your symbols, your character will have frozen and appear to have died. The only way to get the guardians out of this is for the outside team, the other three guardians in the outside room, to rescue you. To do this, they will need to pick up ghosts from their room and deposit into the right guardian statue. The issue is they can't see the missing statues. Only the frozen guardians can. The guardian sta statues, by the way, 
We number from one to six from left to right so that people will know which locations to put them in. Since only the guardians that are frozen can see the statues are in which space, you will need to have the active guardians head over to near the statues and the frozen guardians will need to use their death camera to tell them which spot each frozen guardian is located at. Each of the frozen guardians will only be able to see one and is not your guardian statue. Once one has been identified, put that ghost in and then the frozen guardian will be able to move again in the inside room. One other key note at this, and you only need to do this for all guardians, is once you have that, let's say you had three, you put one in and you send one guardian back, there'll only be two left. So at that point, as long as one of the frozen guardians can identify where a statue is, then their statue is actually in the other one. Because again, you can't see your own and there's only two people left. This is why it's critical to have unique ghosts and unique armor to make this easier. Once this is done, the encounter can continue. Once everyone is out and you've finished everything in all three of the solo rooms, the inside rooms, you will go back to where you spawned in. A series of ads will show up and you will have a minute to finish the encounter. Two unstoppable ogres will show up on the right and left. You'll need to nuke those. Kill additional ads and at that point you'll have about a minute you'll get back into an extended version of the ghost encounter. And you need to do this really quickly. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have one guardian. That one guardian is gonna be alive. All the other five guardians will be frozen and they'll each be able to see one location where the, uh, where the other guardians are located at. So one of the things that's really critical when you do this, when you get into this encounter, because you don't know who's gonna get frozen, is everyone space out so that you don't have trying to get the ghost from one location. You don't want everyone in the same spot. And be in a position where you can see the guardian locations, the statues fairly easily. So at that point, have one, pr and, and when you're getting frozen, almost immediately, you're gonna wanna look and see which guardian you can identify for the person who's trying to put the ghosts in. So at that point, the person that's not frozen will pick up a ghost and will take it to one of the locations. Once they do that, one of the guardians will become available. At that point, both guardians can pick up ghosts and do the same thing. And that's where it gets a little bit easier because you have more people to help out. But again, you only have a minute to do this, so it's really important to do that as quickly as possible because that time will go away from you faster than you think. Once you finish this, you've completed a run the encounter. Now do this three times. And that's where the crazy part is. It's similar to Vault, but again, the, the whole point of this is you never know which room you're gonna be in. That's why you, at very minimum, you have to understand the solo encounter very, very well. And you need to probably understand at least some concepts of the outside room with three guardians. But with the three guardians, you have three guardians. So only one person has to do one role. The other two people are gonna be ad clear. It's really important to understand how to do the solo portion of this encounter. Now to the outside room. For this part of the encounter, I'm not gonna give a lot of explanation on the theory because it's very, very complicated. Just imagine doing trigonometry while you're trying to kill ads. It's, it's just, it's kind of crazy. The overall goal is to build the other side of the key that the inside team needs. These keys are shown as 3D symbols on each guardian. Then how they, how you get those 3D symbols is they are formed by the two 2D symbols that they, they have on the other side. So remember in my other encounter, I had square and triangles and ones I didn't have. If you take a square and a triangle together, they can form a 3D shape. Sounds really complicated, does it? That's because it is. To accomplish this, you need to dissect or swap symbols between statues. If you put a symbol into one statue and then immediately follow up by putting another symbol in another statue, it's gonna swap those between the two, the two statues. Doing this live is very complicated, but luckily you have two guardians who could do ad clear while you do this. The other two guardians just kill ads. For the puzzle solver, I would use the following online tool to simplify this for you. Again, if you really want to understand this, there are other videos out there that are going into a lot of detail about how this works. But again, to make it super, super easy, just use the tool and you can always figure that out over time. The first thing that you need is the inside team to tell you the first two symbols from left to right. So in other words, the left symbol and the middle symbol. You're going to input that into this, t into this tool in that order. Once that is done, check out the room you're in located, again, the left and the mid 3D symbols and put those in, in order in the tool. If for some reason you have matching symbols in your room, which can happen in the left and mid, just click the matching button on the tool. Once it's done, the tool will give you a series of steps you need to order to complete the exercise. If it says to excise one symbol 
from one statue to another, just simply do that. Pick up a shape and put that in one that identifies and then put the second shape in the other. That completes one cycle. The good news in this room is that the shapes always drop from the same night and you have three of them versus two. Circle spawns on left, triangle in mid, square in right. You may have one, two, or three swaps to do. For the puzzle solver, it's very important to pick up the right shapes and to focus on this because once you, if you pick up the wrong shape, there's not much you can do. Let the ad clears do everything else. For the ad clears, do not kill the knights. Let the puzzle solvers do this. The reason that, if you kill three knights, two unstoppables show up and they can be a pain to deal with. The ad clears should also deal with the ghost portion unless the puzzle solver has finished the puzzle by that time. If you do this correctly, the inside room people will be able to exit. And that's really the encounter at this point. Again, it's really important this encounter to understand at a minimum how to do the solo portion because again, it's solo and you're doing that by yourself. It's very, very critical to understand that portion. For the outside room, for doing the part, you have three players. So if nothing else, you only really need one player to be able to do that. Now, obviously, you're never going to know who those three people are going to be. But if you have at least three people who generally know the encounter, um, you're more than likely going to be okay. So it's really, really important to understand the solo component. And if you do that, you do it three times, you'll be able to complete this encounter. Again, very interesting encounter. It's like they took the vault in Last Wish and they said, hey, guess what? We're going to put, you know, calculus and trigonometry in it. Um, it's, it's just, I don't know who came up with that. But again, this is probably one of the encounters that's going to stop a lot of Sherpas from Sherping this, this raid and also is going to prevent people who casually raid from completing this. But my goal in this guide was to give you the simple things you need to focus on. Don't think about everyone else's roles. Focus on your role, become really good at it, and you'll be able to get this in no time. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.